Hello, this video is going to show how we can measure structural coverage with the IR embedded workbench for RISC V. Now this week I was lucky enough to be sent an evaluation kit for RISC V from IAR. And inside this kit, what we'll find is, of course, a copy of IR embedded workbench for RISC V, as well as a Jigger device evaluation board and an iJet light debug probe. So the first thing I did was to connect the probe with the board and I was able to create a simple project inside IR embedded workbench that basically is just blinking a number of LEDs on the board. And so what I'd like to be able to find out is, well, how much of this code is actually being exercised as we go and blink these LEDs? So the starting point is, of course, IR embedded workbench. And inside here, we can see I have this simple project that I obtained from IR. And what I'm going to do is check that I can build it. So there we can see that has successfully built. And we can take a, a quick look at some of the options. And we can see that I've told it to use the iJet debugger. And also inside the general options, we can see this is the particular device on the board. Right, so we've checked that can build. So now I want to start to analyze this code and I want to be able to execute it on the target. And as it executes, I want to find out, well, how much of these functions have we actually exercised? So to do that, I'm going to switch to TB Vision. So inside TB Vision, I've already analyzed the source code and we can see here all the various functions inside these files. Well, let's take a look at maybe a system call graph. And the system call graph is going to show us all the functions and we'll see how they're interconnected. And I can put this into various different modes. For instance, this one is going to show me the cyclomatic complexity for all these functions. And I can sort and rapidly find the most complex function. And in this particular case, it looks like I've set a threshold at maybe uh, 20 and above 20. This is being indicated as failed but uh, let's take a look at this particular function. So let's view it as a flow graph. And in this particular case, we're going to be able to see all the blocks of code and we can see how they're all interconnected. If I click on a particular block over here, we can see the corresponding block over there. Right, so let's go and execute this code. And as it executes, I want to find out well, which paths have we taken through this code. So to do that, I'm going to go and perform what we call the dynamic analysis. So I'm going to generate the instrumented program. I'm going to build it and then go to execute it and finally perform the dynamic coverage analysis. Now, if we just go back into IR, we can see that the main is a while one. So at some stage, I'm going to have to say, well, let's stop this and let's get the coverage off the target. And what I've identified is it's basically calling this delay one millisecond function numerous times. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell the Eldray tool suite that when it executes, after 25 times that it's hit this function delay one millisecond, I want to stop and get data off the target. So let's go and perform the analysis. So going back into TV Vision, this is now starting to instrument the source code, putting probes, and it's now building it with the IR embedded workbench, and it's using CSPY to download the target and execute. I can see on my board the LEDs were flashing. We've hit that delay one millisecond function 25 times, and so now we've uploaded the results, and we're going to be able to take a look and see, well, what coverage did we obtain? So we can look at the coverage in various different modes. Let's start by looking at the system core graph, and this time on the system call graph, let's put it into a mode where we can view the coverage. And there, first thing we're going to observe is there's an awful lot of functions inside here that have never been executed. And that's very highly is dead code that should be removed from the project. Let's see where we have obtained coverage. And of course, we have 100% uh, coverage for our main. We have 100% coverage for the delay one millisecond. What about some of these functions? Well, let's take a look at system clock here and let's view the flow graph. And again, we're going to get a graphical representation 
of that code. And we can see very clearly that we've executed these blocks of code. But here, there's quite a few blocks of code that we haven't executed. And if I want to get full coverage, that's where I could use our unit testing tool, tbrun, in order to be able to complement this coverage. So let's go and do that. So let's invoke tbrun. So this is tbrun, unit testing tool. And I'm going to start by opening a sequence that I've previously created. So let's find one here, maybe for the GPIO. OK, well, let's load that in. And I've got 207 test cases here. Let's take a look at some of the more interesting test cases. And in this particular case, I'm testing this function GPIO dinit. And I've got uh, six test cases for it. We take a look at the variables we've selected. We can see we only have inputs here. Well, we also have some stubs. In this particular case, I want to check that this function is called exactly once. And at the same time, I want to check that this particular variable has this value here. Similarly, for this one, I want to make sure it has that value. All right, so let's go and execute this. So this is now generating a, a harness. It's building it. It's now downloading to the target, executing on the target. We're going to get the results back from the target. And hopefully we're going to find that all these test cases have passed. And at the same time, we're going to be able to measure the coverage. And hopefully now we'll have much better coverage for the GPIO. Well, let's just wait for this to, to complete. And then we should be able to take a look at something like the, the dinit function. So that's the one we, we looked at here. And we can see now we've got 100% statement coverage for that particular function. Well, finally, let's take a look at maybe a test manager report. And this is going to show us everything we've done so far. So first of all, we've done a code review. Well, we've not looked at that. We've measured a number of metrics on the code. And we've executed one sequence of test cases, 207 test cases. They've all passed. And here we can see we have the combined coverage. So this is the combined coverage from two runs. So this is the dynamic analysis. And this was the unit testing we did. And together we can see the coverage that we've obtained. OK, so hopefully that's given you a quick overview of how we can measure structural coverage using IR Embedded Workbench for Risk 5. And if you'd like more information, then please don't hesitate to contact us at LDRA. Thank you.